and move on to the next talk by Francesco Munix Miranda, DFT strategies to approach gold and silver nanoclusters. Good afternoon. I'm here to present you our work about uh, density functional calculations to uh, applied to gold and silver based nanoclusters. Uh, noble metal nanoclusters, uh, nanoparticles, uh, attracted a great deal of interest because of their application in optoelectronics, their use as a ligand to biomolecules, and uh, and they use in medicine, for example, uh, as an antiseptic, uh, as well as for many other reasons. Um, computational chemists started uh, uh, employing DFT-based methods on these particles from quite a time. However, uh, due to the massive size of these uh, nano-objects, uh, most of the calculations you can find in literature um, are not uh, on um, uh, X-ray resolved nanostructures, and even uh, when this is the case, often the organic coating of uh, the metal core uh, is uh, omitted or, or cut. Uh, moreover, there are many functionals and pseudo-potentials which could uh, possibly be employ employed to study these systems. Uh, however, a, a benchmarking of, of these options is not available in literature, to the best of our knowledge. Therefore, we performed some benchmarking on uh, three uh, nanoclusters, two made up of gold, one of silver. Uh, we tested uh, five uh, pseudo-potentials, more than uh, 20 uh, exchange correlation functionals. <coughs> And uh, we fragmented the, our strategy was to fragment this, uh, this nanoparticle into an inner core region and an outer region. We performed most of our benchmarking on the inner region and then applied the best combinations on uh, the complete nanoclusters. Uh, consequently, we also uh, calculated time dependent uh, electronic spectra of the second gold cluster because uh, for this gold cluster, uh, <coughs> the optical spectrum is available. Experiment, the experimental optical spectrum is available. These are uh, the systems we have uh, investigated. The two gold clusters are uh, made of uh, 11 gold atoms, while uh, the silver cluster is made of uh, 14 silver atoms. Uh, the, <coughs> the inner core region is here represented with uh, balls and sticks, while the, uh, the outer region is represented only by sticks. Uh, we assessed the quality of our, of our calculations um, uh, computing the root mean square displacement of uh, the atomic uh, uh, positions of our uh, structural optimizations, uh, all performed with the Gaussian 09 suite of programs. These are some uh, uh, geometries we observed during our uh, optimizations. I have uh, superimposed uh, them in order to show you how uh, different uh, uh, computational combinations of uh, functionals and uh, pseudo-potentials lead to very different structures. Uh, in fact, uh, we, we found uh, uh, that uh, the uh, functionals uh, of the PB family, the GJ functionals of the PB family, actually uh, reproduce uh, the, uh, the experimental structure of the two gold clusters uh, quite well. And the same could be said for CIM, B3L, YP, the M06 HIF functionals, and also the B3L, YP uh, function. Uh, while for the silver cluster, only these three latter uh, functionals uh, should be employed, uh, at least uh, for these uh, specific uh, uh, silver nanoclusters, because other combinations, uh, other functionals gave us uh, uh, very distorted structures. Uh, moreover, if you found that the uh, best pseudo potentials to be employed is probably the uh, modify, slightly modified versions of the popular LNAL2 uh, double zeta uh, pseudo potential for the gold clusters, while for the silver cluster, probably a pseudo-potential combined with a triple zeta basis set should be employed for better results. As I said, uh, for the second gold clusters, uh, the optical spectrum is available. 
from the optical spectrum an uh, um luma gap of uh, sl slightly larger than uh, two electron volts has been extrapolated. And then, uh, uh, as you can see here, the, um, the GJ functionals actually reproduce this um luma gap uh, quite well. While uh, other uh, functionals that uh, perform well on gold, such as, for example, M06HIF and uh, CAMB3LYP, uh, yield uh, an energy gap which uh, exceeds the, the, f the four electron volts uh, uh, thresholds. We then uh, perform calculations on the full nanocluster. We uh, choose uh, uh, only four uh, functions for these calculations, the functions that uh, give the most, in most interesting uh, results uh, on, uh, on the inner course. We uh, adopted uh, a, a, more, a, a smaller basis set for the outer region, namely the STO3G basis set and the 631G basis set. Actually, for the silver cluster, only calculation with the 631G uh, basis set uh, reached convergence. Uh, we, on the contrary, uh, calculation with STO3G did not reach uh, convergence. Um, the, the results for the gold clusters are quite uh, good. Uh, they yielded the uh, structures uh, uh, in agreement with uh, the experimental ones with uh, small errors, while uh, the uh, situation for the, sil the specific uh, silver cluster is uh, a little bit more, a little more complicated. In particular, only uh, the M06HAF function uh, gave us uh, a structure in, uh, uh, similar to, to the experimental one. With, uh, it's, it's reported uh, on the right, on the bottom right. Postponing the issues related to the silver cluster, uh, we uh, approached the, the, the problem of uh, in investigating the uh, electronic spectrum of the second gold cluster. <coughs> in fact, in literature it has been speculated that uh, this optical spectrum uh, could possibly be due to the, uh, to the uh, optical spectrum of the ligand. Should the, in literature, it's speculated that uh, the, the spectrum is actually the redshifted red spectrum of the ligand. Uh, and this is also what uh, I wrote in, uh, in uh, the abstract of this presentation. However, uh, with our uh, time-dependent calculation, it seems that uh, this is actually not, uh, not the case. Uh, in fact, as you can see here, I've calculated the DFT spectrum uh, the time-dependent DFT uh, electronic spectrum of uh, three objects. The first one on the top is the spectrum of triphenylphosphine, which is the ligand of uh, this type of cluster. The, in the middle panel is reported the, the spectrum of uh, the inner gold core, and on the bottom is reported the spectrum of the gold core with uh, uh, one triphenylphosphine ligand. As you can see, the, the spectrum of triphenylphosphine is quite different uh, from the spectrum of... Uh, of the clusters containing gold, and moreover, is quite far. Uh, on the contrary, the, the spectrum of the gold core and the gold core bound to the ligand are actually quite uh, similar. So uh, this suggests that probably the, the effect of the ligand uh, is, uh, is uh, quite small. Uh, moreover, we dissected the, the spectrum of, uh, of these objects. We started with uh, calculations on uh, the organic ligands, on triphenylphosphine. Obviously, these are all orbitals localized on the, on the ligand because uh, it's uh, in isolated uh, calculations. We performed a similar uh, dissection on the spectrum of, uh, obtained on uh, the gold cluster bound uh, to, to one ligand. First of all, I have uh, to notice that uh, uh, the, the lower energy transition occurs at about three electron volts uh, this with the CAM B3 LYP. This, uh, this value is actually uh, three electron volts less than uh, what was found, simply taking the ground state difference in uh, uh, the energy eigenvalues. So probably just take computing this difference is not uh, the, the best way to obtain a quantity to compare the uh, for a comparison with the experiment, even, this, uh, even if uh, this practice is uh, common in, uh, in literature. Uh, however, we here are uh, the, the orbitals involved into the main transitions of, uh, of the, this object. 
these are orbitals localized on the inner core, we observed some uh, charge transfer transition from the metal core to the ligand. However, we did not observe uh, transitions between uh, states localized on the ligands. Uh, as would be expected uh, if the, the spectrum of the nanocluster uh, were just the, the redshifted spectrum of the ligand. Um, Moreover, I want also to, to point out that the, the actual spectrum, the actual electronic spectrum is quite well uh, reproduced by our calculation on this uh, uh, simplified model with uh, uh, the gold uh, nanocore and, uh, and dual ligand. Uh, further calculations on the complete clusters are uh, ongoing uh, with a more limited basis set for, for the ligand. So, in conclusion, I uh, performed calculations on, uh, on these particles. The, the idea to fragment these, uh, these objects uh, to, to uh, understand the, the structural and uh, optical um, uh, properties of, uh, of um, the nanoclusters uh, proved effective. And um, in, uh, in the future, we plan to, to end, to finish the time-dependent DFT calculations on the gold and, si and the silver clusters, and we would also like to, to perform some type binding uh, calculations in order to approach uh, larger nanoparticles. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Pedone, Professor Menziani, for providing me a chance to uh, work on these interesting subjects in the last uh, six months, as well uh, as the Avogadro Colloquia's organizing committee, and you all for your attention. Okay. So usually most of these clusters uh, can be open shell as uh, regards the um, electronic structure. Yeah. And it is customary, for example, to avoid this problem to choose uh, different charges because uh, the spectrum is not yeah. so affected. So in your cases... So this is uh, a closed shell uh, uh, cluster. Uh, for also that. for silver that you mentioned that... Yeah. Ah, because it was a yeah, yeah, we, little uh, bit surprising. We, uh, as I can say, we uh, approached these, uh, these issues, but uh, it's, a, it's a closed cluster, even the, the silver cluster. It's a closed shell. Other questions? <laughs>